श्री चैतन्य मनो भीष्टम स्थापित ये न भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति वंदे अहम श्री गुरु श्री युत पद कमल श्री गुरु न वैष्णवांसा श्री रूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथान्वितमसु जीव साइत सवधूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखा वितांस हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछा कल्पतरुभ्ये कृपा सिंधु एव च पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासरी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण थैंक यू माता जी for the recital of the lovely mangla charan we um, uh, listened to a new meter today so that was really nice um, thank you very much for giving your time mata ji for joining our group um we have uh, we are reading the bhagavad gita as it is mata ji and we are on chapter 9 and chapter 9 is the most confidential knowledge and today we are on text 26 So, Mataji, I'd like to hand over to you. Uh, you can, we can help you with the reading of the purport or the translation or what. It's entirely up to you, Mataji. If I if I recite it once, then everyone else can recite uh, one by one. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Mansi Ganga Mataji. Hare Krishna. Dhanvat Pranam. Hare Krishna, Mansi Ganga Mataji. Hare Krishna. Krishna Mata ji accept our humble obeisances for on behalf of everybody from this group. Hare Krishna. Patram pushpam phalam toyam yo me bhaktya prayachati tad aham bhakti upharam asnami prayatatmana. Anyone want to sing recite the verse please? Vinash Prabhu ji can you recite line by line and then we'll follow you. पत्रम पुष्पम फलम तोयम पत्रम पुष्पम फलम तोयम यो मे भक्त्य प्रयाचति यो मे भक्त्य प्रयाचति तद अहम भक्त्य उपारतम तद अहम भक्त्य उपारतम आस्नामि प्रयतात्मनः हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रहलाद कैन यू रीड लाइन बाय लाइन एंड विल फॉलो यू यस हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा पत्र पुष्प फल तो यो मे भक्त प्रयाचति अस्ना Maybe I can read the word to word, and then translation. Mata ji can read. Patram, patram, a leaf, a leaf. Pushpam, pushpam, a flower, a flower. Palam, palam, a fruit, a fruit. Toyam, toyam, water, water. Ya, ya, ya. Whoever, whoever. whoever. Me, 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 me. Unto, unto, unto. Me, me, 
Bhaktia. Oh, sorry. Adesa. To me. Bhaktia. Bhaktia. With devotion. With devotion. With devotion. Prayachati. Prayachati. Yeah. Offers. 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 That. 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 Aham. 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 I. I. Bhakti Upar. Tam. Bhakti Upartam offered in devotion. Offered in offered devotion. devotion. Asnami. Asnami. Accept. 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 Prayata Atmana. Prayatmana. Prayatmana. From one in pure consciousness. From, From one, one in pure, pure consciousness. consciousness. Hare Krishna. Mataji. Kindly read the translation and then we can help you with the purport. Translation. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. If I read a few words, then maybe you can uh, decide with me. If one offers me with love. If one if offers one. me with love. And devotion. And devotion. And devotion a leaf. A leaf, a flower, a flower, fruit, 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 or water, or water. I will accept it. I will I accept will. it. Would anyone want to read the purport, or shall I read? Mataji, we can help you. It's a long purport. So, uh, shall we read a paragraph at a time, and then, or do you want us to read the whole purport? I think the whole purpose would be better because then we can pick up the points that Srila Prabhupada wants to discuss. Okay. Okay. Pralat, is it possible for you to read the purpose? Yes. Hare Krishna. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. For the intelligent person, it is essential to be in Krishna consciousness, engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In order to achieve a permanent blissful abode for eternal happiness, the process of achieving such a marvelous result is very easy and can be attempted even by the poorest of the poor without any kind of qualification. The only qualification required in this connection is to be a pure devotee of the Lord. It does not matter what one is or where one is situated. The process is so easy that even a leaf or a little water or fruit can be offered to the Supreme Lord in genuine love, and the Lord will be pleased to accept it. No one, therefore, can be, ba can be barred from Krishna consciousness because it is so easy and universal. Who is such a fool that he does not want to be in Krishna consciousness by this simple method and thus attain the highest perfection, the perfectional life of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. Krishna wants only loving service and nothing more. Krishna accepts even a little flower from his pure devotee. He does not want any kind of offering from a non-devotee. He is not in need of anything from anyone because he is self-sufficient and yet he accepts the offering of his devotee in an exchange of love and affection. To develop Krishna consciousness is the highest perfection of life. Bhakti is mentioned twice in this verse in order to declare more em emphati emphatically that bhakti or devotional service is the only means to approach Krishna. No other conditions such as becoming a brahmana, a learned scholar, or a very rich man or a great philosopher can induce Krishna to accept some offering. Without the basic principle of bhakti, nothing can induce the Lord to agree to accept anything from anyone. Bhakti is never, casual, is never causal. The process is eternal. It is direct action in service to the absolute whole. Hare Krishna, someone can continue on from there. That is the first paragraph. Hare Krishna, Nikki. Is it possible for you to... Do you have the Bhagavad Gita better? Hare Krishna. No, I actually don't have it. Okay, fine. 
we are on text 26. Uh, Dennis Prabhuji, do you have the Bhagavad Gita? Uh, yes, I do. Will you be able to read the next paragraph, Prabhu? Sure. Here, Lord Krishna. Here, Lord Krishna, having established that he is the only enjoyer, the, prime, the primeval Lord, and the real object of all sacrificial offerings, reveals what types of sacrifices he desires to be offered. If one wishes to engage in devotional service to the Supreme Lord in order to be purified and to reach the God of life, the transcendental loving service of God, then one should find out what the Lord desires of him. One who loves Krishna will give him whatever he wants, and he avoids offering anything which is undesirable or, un or, un or unasked. Thus, meat, fish, and eggs should not be offered to Krishna. If he desires such things as offerings, he would have said so. Instead, he clearly requests that a leaf, fruit, flowers, and water be given to him. And he says of this offering, I will accept it. Therefore, we should understand that he will not accept meat, fish, and eggs. Vegetables, grains, fruit, milk, and water are the proper foods for human beings and are prescribed by Lord Krishna himself. Whatever else we eat cannot be offered to him since he will not accept it. Thus, we cannot be acting on the level of love and devotion if we offer, if we offer such foods. Uh, should I continue? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, in the third chapter, verse 13, Sri Krishna explains that only the remnants of sacrifice are purified and fit for consumption by those who are seeking advancement in life and release from the clutches of the material entanglement. Those who do not make uh, those who do not make an offering of their food, he says in the same verse, are eating only sin. In other words, they are, every mouthful is simply deepening the involvement in the complexities of material nature. But preparing nice, simple vegetable dishes, offering them before the picture, or, before the picture or deity of Lord Krishna, and bowing down and praying for him to accept such humble offerings, enable one to advance steadily in life to purify the body and to create fine brain tissues which will lead to clear thinking. Above all, the offering should be made with an attitude of love. Krishna, uh, Krishna has no need for food since he already possesses everything that be, yet he will accept the offering of one who desires to please him in that way. The important element in preparation, in serving and, and in offering is to act with love to, Krishna, to love to act with love for Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Soni Mataji, is it possible for you to read the last paragraph, please? Okay, I can help you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Last paragraph, sorry, I just joined in. Uh, text 26, and we are reading the translation. Okay, so I mean, the we are reading the purport. Sorry. From the impersonalist? Yes, Mataji. Okay, very good. Haribu. The impersonalist, uh, the impersonalist philosophers who wish to maintain that the absolute truth is without senses cannot comprehend this verse of Bhagavad Gita. To them, it is either a metaphor or proof of the mundane character of, Chris, of Krishna, the speaker of the Bhagavad Gita. But in, but in actuality, Krishna is the supreme personality and the supreme Godhead has senses and it is stated that his senses are interchangeable. In other words, one sense can perform the function of any other. This is what it means to say that Krishna is, that Krishna is, is absolute. Lacking senses, he could hardly be considered full in all opulences. In the seventh chapter, Krishna has explained that, that he impregnates the living entities into material nature. This is done by his looking upon, uh, looking upon material nature. And so in, the, in this instance, Krishna's hearing the devotee's words of love in offering foodstuffs is wholly identical with his eating and actually tasting. This point should be emphasized because of his absolute position. His hearing is wholly identical with his eating and tasting. Only the devotee who accepts Krishna as as he describes himself without interpretation, can understand that 
the supreme absolute truth can eat food and enjoy it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Sony Mataji. Mataji, can we hand over to you or do you want us to reflect a little bit? Yes. If one or two people can reflect, then we can move on. Anybody who wants would like to reflect on this? Maybe I can uh, give one of my ref uh, reflections that I found it amazing that Krishna would be eating the food uh, that I, I serve him. So I think that he is so powerful and Radharani's kitchen is so uh, big and he, she must be making different uh, foods for him every day and she never repeats. And there here we are sitting and thinking that he's going to taste this little same mamra I've put or a little bit of um, uh, fruit that I've put. So I think this is amazing and I think this shows how much God loves us if that is true, that he will accept anything that we offer him with love. Anybody would like to comment? Pralat, your mic is on. Yes, Pralat. Okay, so there's not much to say in this uh, text that I can see. Uh, the translation itself is... Uh, short and straight to the point. And the purport that Srila Prabhupada explains uh, regarding this text, it just uh, reminds me of uh, the time when we had uh, a class with uh, Ramrup Prabhu regarding deity worship. So, of course, these things have been discussed, not only that time, but also time and again, it comes to us that, you know, uh, we are, we are supposed to offer certain things to Krishna in, uh, in terms of, you know, when, when we are serving him, we can only serve certain things. So we are told here that he clearly requests that a leaf, fruit, flowers, and water to be given to him. And he says of this offering that he will accept it. Uh, therefore, we should understand that we should, we, uh, that he will not accept meat, fish, and eggs. Uh, so that, that basically, it's, it's just been knowledge that we have been told now and again, there are certain things you can offer to Krishna and there are certain things that you can't. And here we are, big, we are being given further detail that vegetables, grains, fruits, milk, and water mm -hmm. are the proper foods for human beings and are prescribed by Lord Krishna himself. Now the human being, in order to survive, we do not need, you know, all, all these things, meat, fish, and eggs in terms of protein, because protein is also there in vegetables, even some certain v vitamins and, uh, you know, minerals. They're all, they're all there in vegetables, grains, fruits, milk, and water. And, you know, there was this, uh, there was this uh, funny, uh, funny discussion that I had with one of my friends that, he said that majority of the bodybuilders, you know, they mostly take these things uh, for, for protein, meat, fish, and eggs. So I told him, they, there is no need for such things because you already have them in vegetables and fruits and grains. So there's no point of taking that. In fact, we have a vegan bodybuilder. He only relies on vegetables and water and that, that's pretty much it. Vegetables, grains, fruits, and water. You, you can even check on YouTube. There is such a thing as a vegan bodybuilder. And uh, now we're told here that... Uh, now we're we, we told about what we can offer and what we should offer. You know? And now we're being told about the methodology of offering. You know, that Krishna himself says that if one offers me with love and devotion, that is very key. You can't just offer and just leave it like that. No, you have to, it has to come from the heart, you know, like it truly, it truly matters. Like you really love Krishna. Like we have been saying on numerous occasions that Krishna just wants our unconditional love. Yes, that, that love that doesn't come 
you know, because you want something out of him. And uh, we are also we are also told, um, yeah, we also told now and again about the impersonalist philosophers that are being used as an example. Uh, that you know they they try to maintain that the absolute truth is without senses and cannot comprehend this verse of Bhagavad Gita. So now we are people who are in this path of Krishna consciousness, Krishna consciousness, and uh, we are not uh, these sort of people that are just here to study and just leave the knowledge like that. No, we are here to study, practice, and uh, improve on ourselves so that we can attain the Supreme. Not just so we can just have this knowledge intact like any other history book or chemistry book that you may have. And uh, we finally, before I, uh, I leave it, before I, I end my uh, realization, we are being told here that, uh, yeah, since he already pos uh, possesses everything, that be, yet he will accept the offering of one who desires to please him that way, in that way. So that, that is a very, very nice phrase that I really like because it is, it is the truth. Lord Krishna created this universe and he can destroy it anytime he wants to. He created us, he created everything. So clearly he owns everything. Uh, he, he, he owns everything. Yes, he possesses everything. Be it anything that is man-made, still you, you can trace it back to Krishna. Because now let me give you an example. Uh, we have probably wiring, electronics and all that. Majority of the components, be it whether it's metal or something of the sort, metal comes from where it comes from the earth. It is material. So therefore, you know, Krishna created this world. Metal, of course, he would own metal. And uh, we have wood, it comes from trees. Trees are in this world, of course. So yes, even though he possesses everything, he will still accept the offering of one who desires to please him in that way. Like I believe it was in the story of Sudama that when he went to visit, when he went to visit Krishna, and he had a, he had a small uh, portion of, of, of rice. I believe that Krishna, when he saw this, he took it and, and he ate it himself. Yes? Krishna is, is, is the Lord. He can probably eat like a king, you know? Okay, well, not probably, because he, he can eat like a king, you know? Many meals... Probably he even has a big table. Not even probably, can. He, he can have a big table with, with various dishes. Have we can have shrikand, shrikand, paneer here, anything. But still, whatever you have, whatever you have, be it a small portion of kheer or even a small portion of rice and dal, offer that with your heart and you will accept it. You will reject the rest of the food, but you will accept that. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prahlad. Anybody would like to contribute before I hand over to Mataji? Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, mine is just a small one. Uh, just something that uh, I came across on the internet. It's about, uh, I, I could just read it. <clears throat> That, for example, you have potatoes, you, you want to eat it, you, you take it, peel it, cut it, fry it, and eat it. Well, that's karma, okay? Yeah. Then you want to eat potatoes, you take it, peel it, cut it, fry it, offer it to Krishna, and eat it. That is karma yoga. And then there's another one, that you want to please Krishna, and you have got potatoes. You take it, peel it, cut it, fry it, and offer it to Krishna, then eat it. That is bhakti yoga. So, <clears throat> so the potato hasn't changed actually. It's the cooking process that, and the, and the cooking process has not changed. So the difference here is the consciousness. 
yeah and uh, we should always uh, go for the third one of course that you want to please krishna and you've got potatoes you take it peel it cut it fry it make fries offer it to krishna then eat it yeah so uh, in 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 this case it's it's so simple yeah you can you can also, you can you can you can you can do this as in if you offer uh, anything with the with the just like it says in the translation with love and devotion not thinking about yourself that you want to just please him then that's how it, it should be basically yeah i know it's a little difficult for us who are starting and we only just think about ourselves we just like to eat fries and you just offer it no should should try you know the other the other way around yeah that we want to please him and it's so easy it's very very easy as as it's written here but it is also very difficult hari krishna for for me uh, okay at least yeah i'm still learning hari krishna hari krishna mata ji we are all in the same boat how many times have i put a popcorn in my mouth while walking yeah. or a biscuit uh, yes. uh, i mean i have seen a lot so uh, i i know and even while chanting i think of what menu what food i'm going to be making so yes. i'm shifting a little bit by saying okay what what should i make for krishna but it is still taking time it is still taking time so very true yes not yeah. you alone mata ji i'm even behind you because i even eat without offering which is something after i eat and i say oh my god i didn't even offer yeah so, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i'm in that boat yes, yes divesh prabhu ji habit <laughs> get into the habit of the offering yes ma'am take a little while but you'll get there okay yes yeah thank you for the encouragement at least when you say this we feel okay there is hope for us yes yeah divesh prabhu ji divesh prabhu ji Hello Krishna Mata ji sorry I've joined in a bit late okay. but um uh, this is my favorite line in the whole Bhagavad Gita um it's the only line where well there's only scripture where I've read the lord is although everything belongs to him is the only line where he's written that this is what he'll accept with love and devotion uh secondly I'd like to note that um it's all in singular so even one leaf one flower one drop of water or or fruit um he, so anyone in this world can offer the lord a prayer with any of these uh so he's he doesn't really require much and the key word is love and devotion so for me this is my actually favorite favorite line in the whole uh, scripture and uh it's just my own realization that i wanted to share thank you hari krishna Hare Krishna thank you very much Divyesh Prabhu ji any more uh, anybody would like to share an experience or anything okay shall i start then yes yes okay we just read Hare Krishna we just read the whole uh, purport and shila prabhupad has highlighted a few things one should be a sincere devotee krishna only wants service with a loving service but this mentioned twice in this uh, verse there's no condition you can be a brahman or illiterate whatever you can do it he already possesses the whole world and the last one is impersonalist can't relate to offering so now we'll start krishna tells us how to worship him directly here in the verse to raja vidya raja gukhyam pavitram idam uttamam he explains how pure and transcendental the bhakti is devotional service is and then in the text 15 he says gnana yagnena chapiyanne yajanto mam upasate ekatvena prathaktvena bahudha vishvato mukham so different people take different channels um to serve to worship him some decide that he is a jyoti he is a brahma jyoti so it's one to one some decide he is a virat roop so they start on um, worshiping um like a sun or a moon 
some decide that he's in a demigod um, worship. So they start uh, worshiping the demigods. But that is all indirect worship. The direct worship is just coming in now. After giving all these uh, different indirect worships, in this verse, um, Krishna is coming to the main how to worship, worship him directly. So when we talk about worshiping him directly, the atheists don't come in because they don't believe in the existence of God. So where's the question of offering anything? An impersonalist will decide, yes, but uh, God is a nirakar, he is a nirgun. So how can he accept uh, our offering? But as a Vaishnavas, we know that Krishna is nirakar, but that no form, nirakar is, he doesn't have a form. He doesn't have a material form, but he does have a transcendental form. And um, with the transcendental hands and legs, he can accept the food and he can eat as well. With Nirgun, because he is Nirgun, no, Krishna is a um, cause of all the causes. Ishwara Param Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadi Radir Govinda Starva Karana Karanam. He is a cause of all the causes. So he is a cause of the material modes of material nature as well. So modes of mode of material nature, rajas, tamas, and uh, sattva. sattva, all three come out are under his control. He is not under the control of uh, material modes. In his uh, spiritual form, Krishna holds a Kaumodaki um, club. He holds a um, Sudarshan Chakra. He holds the Panchajanya conch. So he has to have hands. He has all his paraphernalia, have names as well. So if an impersonalist or Mayavadi or a Brahmavadi decide that the Lord is Nirakar and Nirgun, we can refute that no, Krishna um, has a um, transcendental form. These are the, they, that is the opening verse of Brahma Samhita. Um, and because he is a cause of all causes, uh, Krishna owns everything. He and owns the entire planet, the entire planet's um, planetary system. Um, we are in Ekpad, but Krishna is in a Tripad. Tripad is three-fourth of the manifestation of Krishna is spiritual. Only one-fourth is a material manifestation. So in the Ekpad, he controls everything. It's just when we have a young child goes to the nursery, when he comes back, He's got a piece of paper with a few pencil marks scratched around and a couple of dollops of uh, paint. And he brings home, mommy, this is for you. I made a, I made a picture of you, you and daddy. And parents would be so pleased. Were, oh yes, my little baby has made a nice picture. And the same applies to us. Krishna is our father. He's our master. We are his children, but because of, thousands of lifetimes that we have been away from him. We've forgotten. Now we want to build a relationship with him, a direct relationship with him, um, because that's the way we'll be able to approach him. And uh, Krishna has asked how he, he can be uh, approached and pleased. When we want to approach somebody on the material plane, first we offer them something, we go out to see the football match or cricket match and slowly build up a relationship. So now here we are coming to Krishna, see we want to approach him and we want a direct uh, approach, which uh, includes deity worship. So um, the deity, uh, and that direct approach is uh, worshiping the deities um, and offering him the stuff that he likes to uh, ask for. He is asking for, if we go to River Ganga, most of us would go one day or we'd want to go. Um, there's plenty of waters flowing. We stand knee deep there, take some palm full of water and offer it back to Ganga. Um, that is because we want to give her an honor. We want to respect her. We, we accept her um, superiority. But uh, how do we honor her? 
she is so pure. We have to find something better than her, which we haven't. She is a purest. So we take her own water and offer it back to her. And she accepts it. Krishna himself, he accepts thousands of uh, preparations. No, we, because this, this, uh, this verse is on the deity worship, the direct uh, worship. So we'll, we'll sort of stick to the Pujari room uh, workings. And Krishna is unlimited in a sense that um, like in one day, if you look up, um, we got 400 ISKCON temples where every single day for Rajbhog, minimum 15 to 20 offerings are uh, put in front of Krishna. The bigger temples, um, 32 offerings. And the uh, top moments, they, have, they offer so much. There's only the 400 tem temples around the world. In Vrindavan, we got 5,000 temples. They are all Krishna's temples. If you look around the rest of India, there's thousands and thousands of temples. And there are other um, temples around the world where Krishna is being uh, uh, worshipped, but they are not ISKCON yet. They worship Krishna. So if you calculate how many offerings are given to Krishna in one single day, then you think, oh my God, Krishna is eating so much. No, he's unlimited. He can eat unlimitedly. And he still can manage to reciprocate with all those who have made something for him. In Jagannath Puri, he eats every single hour. His hand does not dry. He will only, only one or two hours are left out. He eats for 22 hours. So he can eat unlimitedly. He is unlimited himself. And some of us, um, we think, oh, I'm a very insignificant uh, person. I can't offer him. I'm um, very low. But no, Krishna says properly, if someone offers me something with love and devotion, I will accept it. So a devotee thinks that Krishna will not interact with him. No, that's a wrong perception. Krishna will interact with each and every devotee, no matter how small or the big the offering is. So in this verse, he re reveals his mind, what he likes to be offered. Our sadhana should revolve around what he's asking for, not we want to give. We might want to give him Coca-Cola or some non-vegetarian produce. But that is a material desire. Just to satisfy oneself, that is our own selfish desire to offer him Coca-Cola or some non-vegetarian food. He hasn't asked for it. He has asked for patram pushpam palam toyam. So if we ask him, if we give him something which he hasn't asked, is karma mishra bhakti. We are giving him. And that karma mishra bhakti is not giving to um, give any reaction. We won't have the reciprocation of Krishna. Krishna is very clear on what he desires. So to satisfy him, we'll have to satisfy um, what he asked, what he has to, what he's asking for. And that will satisfy everyone, the root. Um, it's not just one sense. We just discussed um, offering him food. That is his sense of eating, a sense of taste. But he's got five senses because he's a person. And um, He's got a he's transcendental person, but he's a person, so he's got five senses. And, and if we think uh, I will give him whatever I like, that doesn't work. Our sadhana should be to achieve him. Otherwise, it's from Eva he came along. As uh, Sutta Goswami instructs the uh, sages in Naima Sharanya, you are just wasting your time. There will not be any reciprocation. So why not ask him, um, listen to him? and then give him what he is asking for. Um, all the four items he has asked for apply to the deity worship. And we all have small altars in our own homes. So if we, you can make a tasty strawberry lassi, but if you offer that in a container that previously um, was used for drinking alcohol, then it will not be accepted. Um, if you use the utensils used for non-vegetarian cooking or the uten utensils to offer him, um, either cooking or offering him, if the non-vegetarian stuff was used, it becomes unclean. It will not be accepted. And um, 
as Krishna Das Kavidaj Goswami says, the desire to gratify one's own senses is calm, lust, but to, to set, desire to please the senses of Lord Krishna is prem. So if we want to please Krishna, then we do exactly what he is asking for. We cannot start using unsuitable containers or unsuitable um, food that he does not want. We are making all efforts to please Krishna by satisfying all his senses. We are offering him, we can offer him fragrant flowers to satisfy his sense of smell. We can offer him leaves by cooking tasty vegetables and that will, um, that will satisfy his sense of uh, taste. Here, at, at this point, we cannot offer him tulsi leaf, which is cooked. Tulsi is never to be cooked. When we make a preparation, we put a, a fresh tulsi leaf um, on the top of the preparation. Tulsi leaves and flowers are Krishna's favorite. Just as uh, in a previous, uh, some of the words he said, Mahatmanas tu maam partha daivim prakrutim ashrita. He mentioned Radharani. In this verse, he is saying patram pushpam phalam toyam. He doesn't say pushpam patram phalam toyam. Patram pushpam, patram is, um, is for Tulsi Maharani. He is mentioning Tulsi Maharani here. If you put some Tulsi Maharani on his preparation, he is going to accept it. The sense of sight and sense of hearing are like chanting Hare Krishna and um, making nice creative flower arrangements and offering arrangements um, will please his uh, sense of sight and hearing. He, had, he has given us a system how to please him. He's asking for Ananya Bhakti. A little girl will hold a doll in her hand and she would change the clothes and put her on her lap and put, put her to sleep. She will do everything for the doll shower all the love and affection on the doll without expecting anything in return. That is how the Ananya Bhakti should be towards Krishna. We don't expect anything in return, but we still worship him. Um, in uh, Vrindavan Dham, one of our six Goswamis, uh, Sanatan Goswami, was going around um, Vrindavan Brajamandal, he would sleep in under one tree and change his residence um, to sleep another another, another tree. He, he, would, he would not have a fixed um, residence. One day, uh, Mathura Brahmin gave him a Madan Mohan deity. Now we got a big temple, Madan Mohan temple. But in those days, um, Sanatan Goswami was a mendicant. He didn't have anything. And he was given this Madan Mohan deity. So what he would do at night was put Madan Mohan deity in a, a little bag and hang it on the tree um, under which he was going to sleep. In the morning, he would bring down the deity, worship the deity with gum, Yamuna water, and then he would uh, go out on a madhukari, collect a couple of uh, rotis and offer those rotis to uh, Madan Mohan or Krishna. Um, one day, Madan Mohan Deity was very, very tired. He said, look, Sanatan, you keep giving me these dry rotis every single day. At least give me some salt with it. And Madan Mohan um, Deity wanted salt. Sanatan Goswami said, Prabhu, I'm a mendicant. I don't have any possession. All I have is these two rotis, which I specially bring it for you. And how can I get anything else for you? I don't have it. Now, this is a very, very high level of uh, deity worship. We can't, we can't um, follow it or we can't even identify ourselves with it. For us, it's a little home um, altar. Um, along the, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, a person need not have taken birth in a Brahmin family, need not be a learned scholar, need not be very rich, it doesn't have to be a philosopher. Um, but if he is a sincere devotee, Krishna will uh, accept his offering. Now, this was actually factually proved by uh, Jagannath. 
in Jagannath Puri, two kilometers away from Jagannath Puri is a gram. There's a small uh, village, Bali Gram. And there was a Dasya Bauri living there. Is this Dasya was a Shudra. He was completely illiterate and he was extremely poor. He would hardly make his uh, ends meet. Now that Dasya Bauri, because he was a devotee, one day he, in a dream, he thought, Jagannath has come to my dream and he's told me, you can offer me something and I will accept it. And in the morning when he got up, he said, was I dreaming or was I thinking? Because he was a Shudra. He thought a Shudra can't offer anything to the Lord. I, Brahmins can do it. I'm not, I'm a Shudra. And what can I offer him anyway? And then he thought maybe Jagannath really came to my uh, dream and he has asked for this offering. So I have to do something. So he went around the village and um, he procured a nice coconut because in Orissa, there's plenty of coconut trees. And um, most people would give out a, a coconut. So he managed to get a coconut. He had to give up all his uh, money just to get that coconut. And then he went around the village to find out which Brahmin was going to Jagannath Puri to deliver uh, food and milk to the Jagannath temple. And he found the man and he said, can you take my, um, off, um, my, uh, my uh, coconut? I want to offer it to Jagannath. And the Brahmin looked because a Brahmin was looking at a Shudra and Shudra was saying him, uh, can you take this offering? So Dasya Bauri said, all you have to do is stand in front of the Garud uh, Samba. There's a Garud Samba in, in the Jagannath Puri. And he said, raise your hand with coconut in your hands and say the Dasya Bauri wants to offer you this. Please Jagannath, accept it. Now in little villages, there's all kinds of people living. There's a Shudras and Brahmins and Vaishyas, but they have a very special relationship. It's very personalized uh, family atmosphere and everybody sort of uh, respect one another. So uh, the Brahman, even though he thought, oh, the Dasya wants this, Shall I do it? Shall I not do it? But okay, I'll do it. And then he took it and he went to Jagannath Puri. And after delivering all those um, items and milk to the pujaris of a Jagannath temple, um, he came out and there were, the coconut was there. So he said, well, I'll st stand near the Garud's thumb as I've been told. And uh, I'll raise my hand and just uh, say, oh, Jagannath, ex uh, accept this. Uh, offering that Dasya has uh, sent you. And then I'll take it back and go back to my village. And so he stood, he raised his hands uh, with coconut in, in, his, in the, both his hands. And suddenly his hands froze, it was completely frozen. And some great force pulled the coconut out of his hand. So uh, the man wasn't able to do anything. A little while later, the hands, when the hands became live again, he put down and he was thinking, what happened? Wonder what force dragged that coconut out of my hands. And he was trying to talk to the priest. He said, something happened to my hands. And the priest came running. He said, you know what happened? On a Ratnavedi, where Lord Jagannath sits, there's coconut shells everywhere. And there's coconut water running down the face of Lord Jagannath. And they said, but we haven't offered the coconut to Jagannath. Wonder what happened? That's when the Brahmin who had brought Dasya Bauri's offering realized that, oh, this is Dasya Bauri's offering. And um, even though he was a Shudra and he's illiterate, doesn't know what to do, but he is a sincere devotee. So then he was recognized as a sincere devotee. So that's four. So here Krishna has given us a system. He is asking for Ananya Bhakti and um, that's how he will reciprocate to us, with us. The four items he has asked are Patram, Pushpam, Falam, Toyam. Patra means leaf, which is for, which uh, applies to Tulsi. The Fal um, can be, if it is a large uh, fruit um, and very thick skin, we can peel it 
and take out the stone like a, like a mango and, and cut it and offer it. If we got a small fruit like strawberries or grapes, we just wash them and offer them. This is the minimum we can offer. Krishna is asking here for the minimum. He is not asking, he's not the top ceiling. If people who are better off, they can offer rice, chapati, sabji, roti, everything, whatever we are eating. The bigger the person, the richer the person, whatever they are eating has to be offered first. That's what a rich person will do. If um, people who have um, the deities, they can offer him new clothes, new ornaments. Um, if you are a very uh, highly educated person, they can offer him a poem. Um, we can simply help in the building a temple. A rich man can build a temple or help towards the building of a temple. So there's plenty of uh, departments in deity room where you can help. For the Tulsi Devi, uh, there is a chance of we can grow Tulsi Devi at home. Um, here in Europe, we have to grow Tulsi Devi in a small pot and put, uh, put the pot um, where there's plenty of sunlight and heat. But in East Africa, where most of you are located, it's so easy to grow uh, Tulsi Devi. And there's enough heat, enough light, completely fresh air. Now, all you have to do is give her plenty of water, which is reverse here. In Europe, we have to make sure we don't give her plenty of water. Even though at the present, there's a Tulsi Jaldan started, and in India and everywhere, they have started um, giving Tulsi Devi that uh, constant water. And we can't uh, um, apply that in Europe. Otherwise, our plant will be gone within a week. So we also have to use our intelligence um, in offering um, what Krishna is asking for. Well, Hare Krishna, because we only got five minutes left. We can sing Bhogarti, which uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written um, when we are offering. They do normally in the, in the Radha London Ishwar Temple, Bhaktivedanta Manor. A, a, a priest would be sitting somewhere along and uh, sing a Bhogarti. So, Hare Krishna, we only got five minutes left, so I, I won't like to continue and leave everything half done. Is there any questions? If I made any mistake, I would like to be corrected. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you so much for this um, uh, session and especially really enjoyed all the examples that you gave. And um, uh, who else would be better uh, to give us uh, a commentary on uh, 926 because we know that you serve the uh, uh, Radha Landaneshwar deities. So uh, you interact with the deities and we are so grateful that we have this opportunity coming directly from a person who is really serving the deities. So Haribol Mataji, uh, we think it's a real, real, real good fortune. Before I give uh, Vishaka Mataji a chance to ask questions, I have a few questions, so I'll uh, ask all the questions and maybe then uh, Vishaka Mataji could be the next. So uh, we, you gave us a lot of examples of um, deities interacting with devotees. Um, I mean, these examples were, um, have been documented and it's there in our Shastras, but are there any other examples that have recently uh, happened and is there any experience you've had with the deity? This is not so uh, uh, something that we want to hear about miracles or something, but this is just to increase our faith that yes, 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 definitely he'll take my uh, boga that I've offered. It, just to give us confidence because we are neophytes and we don't know, we first even didn't know that the Lord had a form. I mean, and as a geneticist, I should have known that, so my father looks like this, my grandfather looks like this, my grandfather's grandfather looks like this and Krishna is my father so definitely he has to have a form but yes. that also I didn't know uh, yeah. and I've learned through all the um, various sessions that we've had so just to increase our faith uh, and then I wanted to ask a question about onion and garlic so can we cook in the same utensil where we have cooked onion and garlic so these um, are I know about meat fish and eggs 
I'm not sure about garlic and onion, and I don't think they are very strict because most people who are come to Krishna consciousness comes from the families where garlic and onion is cooked. And um, if they are too strict, then people won't come. So I'm not sure about it. Nobody mentions it. Um, normally, um, people, I mean, I'm, I haven't been eating garlic and onion for years and years, past 40 years, I haven't touched it. So we don't have any in, in my family, but there are people who normally come from the backgrounds or they are the only ones following the, the four principles. There are other members of the family don't uh, say it. So they like, the, so it's best to talk to them per one-to-one -one mentor. Okay. They'll be able to give a individual answer. There is no overall answer. Okay. Unless uh, Mansi Ganga Mataji has an idea. Yeah, not an idea. I'd like to express uh, the standard yes. uh, that we do follow in ESCON. Yes. Uh, because Kritika Mataji's question was, can we cook in the same pot that we offer to Krishna onion garlic? And to be quite honest, according to ISKCON standard, it is a no. Because you can always, I mean, I can understand your husband, your children, they want to have onion garlic and you're the only ISKCON follower. Mm -hmm. So of course it's difficult, we understand, but you can always have separate pot to cook uh, for Krishna. If Krishna doesn't need elaborate offering. The offering can be very simple because he understands, he's a gunagrahi janardana, he understands your difficulties. So just offer something separately to Krishna in a different pot. I don't think it is an impossible mission because that's the standard we try to teach congregation. That's the standard we try to teach anyone and everyone who kind of joins with this con. And most people follow <coughs> happily. I know there are places where the family will not cooperate, but then you're the cook in the kitchen you have the upper hand anyway. Half the time, if you don't put, they don't even realize you've not put onion garlic, you know? Mm -hmm. So to me, if the Africans can take to the process of not eating, uh, surely the Indians can learn. That's just, uh, I'd like to say, really uh, certain things we have to be strict, you know? Especially when we're offering to Krishna. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Mataji. Okay, and then interaction with the deities? Uh, there are some interaction, I know, in the, in the Radhalan and Ishwar temple, um, but uh, the Pujaris don't like to disclose it. Uh, they don't like to bring it out. They would normally would talk to the head Pujari, and if the head Pujari brings it out, only then it's uh, put for the general public. Otherwise, they like to keep it... Uh, as it is, because we don't want to encourage people to say these are the miracles we're happening. Some things do happen, but it doesn't come out that much. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Vishaka Mataji, I know you're tired of your hand is up since no, no. a long time. So no, no. go ahead. No, no, that's all right. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare I, Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much for the I just thoroughly loved your lecture and uh it did Mataji say. But my question is, um, you know, I normally offer everything, yeah? Yes. But uh, when it comes to like uh, ready-made rich tea biscuits or something like that, yeah, yes. uh, I don't. So I, I don't offer it, but I, I always think in my mind, oh, Krishna, uh, I'm having this, but I'm also thinking of you. Is it okay to do that? No. Normally, we don't eat biscuits or the stuff which is outside. If we go to a friend's when there is a satsang and people have cooked, if you know that this person is cooking properly, um, then we accept it. But uh, biscuits and breads, uh, they are not really um, encouraged. And it's very easy to give up biscuits. But uh, Mataji, wouldn't we 
like you know other family members wouldn't they think we are over the board like you know um because not everybody is a devotee in the household yes and you want to show in a, you you don't want to show yourself over the extreme because um uh you want it to be you know the influence naturally to to the other family members yes. and if we start doing all this then they will think we are just on a fanatic side like to over the board you know what i'm trying yes. to as long as it's vegetarian it's eggless yes. it hasn't got any additives and things like that and yes. you think okay it's fine to have it wouldn't uh, on the other hand become like that um we can i mean i was living with my son and daughter in law for 8 years and they liked uh, biscuits bread all that and grandchildren they have biscuits and all so it's in the in the house but um, my husband and i we try to keep away from it sometimes just to please them we might take a little bit which shouldn't be done but we also have to live in the same family and same community so sometimes you have to drop the crab it's different when you are living in a temple but when you're living outside and there's a family problem then very rarely you might have to accept it but normally my husband and i we won't touch it okay hari krishna one more one more question it's uh, not direct to you but uh, mataji you know just now i forgot the name of mataji who just uh, gave us the reason that we shouldn't uh, be offering the lord uh, with um, um, anything which has been a uh, uh, cooked in a pan whereby there was onion or something was used yes. yeah but my question so if if somebody if in my case i don't have that problem but i'm just randomly thinking of other 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 members um say if they have this problem where by majority of the family are having this onion uh, garlic food yeah and uh, there's one person or two person in the household who are not you know so if in that case you will prepare okay the boga in a separate pan and for krishna but then wouldn't the rest of the food you want all that food to be sanctified so that mm-hmm. when the rest of the family member has it they also get that uh, that uh, uh, you know that uh, blessing or you know krishna's mercy and one day they become a devotee that's the whole point because i will say my daughter in law she uh, she eats onion and garlic but she, we don't eat in the house but i i feel i must make her eat all the prasad i make even a chapati or rice anything so that she gets that mercy indirectly yes so wouldn't the other family member miss out on that mercy that's my question yeah they would miss out but this is one to one because everybody's members of the family react differently sometimes some members of the family who are very mild if you say okay no garlic and onion they'll accept it um some members of the family don't they will refuse to do what you tell them to do we want to we want to give them prasad we want to give um ask them to stop eating onion and garlic but we are not in a position to so then what to do we just have to be um, a bit more patient and uh, keep giving them prasadam that we have got we made without garlic and onion so on top of whatever they are eating they'll also have a bit of prasad because that's how uh, the temple um, i mean soho temple is well in the middle and uh, such people come um, and they are all getting prasad and by prasad people change so our prasad that we have cooked make sure that they the rest of the members of the family eat and it takes a little while for some people it takes a little while to um, change a lot of people refuse to change there are some people who change immediately so it's each di- each person behaves differently uh, mansi ganga mata ji might have another idea it's a, no no not another idea i fully agree with you it's a very one to one because we judge where our family is at yes however the power of prashadam is so great let me tell you i'm from a bengali family and there's 
pure non-vegetarian. They can't give up fish and meat. And to think uh, my two brothers, I mean, really they were like carnivores. And my mother would cook separately for herself. And then she would tell me, I was in the UK at that time. She would say, you know what? When I would uh, uh, put it for myself, they would say, no, we want your food. So she gradually started cooking more because they, so if a carnivorous people could get a taste of prashadam, Gujaratis are by nature, they are vegetarian. So where's the difficulty? You know, and uh, somebody told me, those who are very fond of onion, you uh, add cabbage that gives that flavor. And those who are very fond of uh, garlic, put hing in it. Yes. That gives the flavor of uh, garlic. There, there are ways of like, it says, yena kena prakarena. Somehow we have to get them to eat prashadam. Yes. You know, yes. somehow. Uh, whichever way we cheat them, we lie to them, whatever, you know, the higher principle is we want them to become, uh, take on a prashadam. You know, so you correctly answered. It's a very individual thing. You know your family, you know how far you can stretch yes. them with whatever. But if our desire is strong that they should have prashadam, I'm very sure Krishna will help us. You know, and I, like I gave my exam, I mean, literally, Two of my brothers, they took to, whenever my mother was there, they were happy eating her prashad. And they were like, every day there has to be meat for them, you know. So if they can change, then anyone can. Anyone can change, yes. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, a lot of Gujaratis who have come to UK, they are vegetarians um, for one day or one week. They are vegetarians on a Saturday because it's a Hanuman something. They are vegetarians on Monday because they are praying to Lord Shiva. A lot of them are vegetarians at home, but when they go out to a restaurant, then they, they are not vegetarians. You know, there's quite a few different variety of vegetarians, uh, Gujaratis here. Um, but with the ISKCON and Prashad distribution is it's definitely helping. We're trying our best. Um, what else can we do I mean, every single day? I, I'm, me, my husband and I both, are, we, we work in the temple and we bring home um, the Mahaprasad. And normally the grandchildren would go for sweets and biscuits and all that. And then the older children, they will go for pakoras and all. And whatever is left out is mixed up together. And both of us would take it. It's, it's prashad. What, what's the difference? It doesn't matter. So we have to sort of, uh, increase our own Krishna consciousness like that. And okay, you people help whatever you like first, and then I'll have a leftover. Even at home, if you cook something like that. London Ishwara Mahaprasad is very powerful. I was in this uh, manner, yes. and uh, I don't know if you know Jagatam Prabhu, uh, Ajamil's Jagatam, wife. Yes, I know. Yeah, you know her. Yes. So she would tell me if you were not well, she would say, just go and take Radha London Ishwara's Prashad and you'll be all right. She was so yes. convinced yes. London Ishwara's Prashad was the most yes. powerful. Very, very. Prashad. I'm you going know, and, to go for it. I'm going to go for the prashad now. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's very true. Yeah. Hare Krishna. I have to get off. Okay. Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We're past uh, the time. So. Uh, I, I know. Mataji, do you have 10 more minutes? Because uh, I saw the hand raised from Richa and Divyesh okay. Prabhu. Okay. If you have okay. 10 more minutes, we will stop exactly at 7.20. All right then. Okay. Uh, okay. Divyesh Prabhuji. Uh, Mataji, I just want, I wanted to ask, um, is there anywhere actually in the scripture that is it written, you can't eat onion and garlic? There's always a, because even with this line, Krishna says, he's never said about this, uh, you know, or is there something somewhere that he's written or said himself as a Lord? No, it's somewhere in the, some, I don't know, it's the Upanishad or uh, something like somewhere it is written, but I haven't got the reference for it. Uh, sure. Just in case you come across it, do you mind sharing? Because today, I mean, yes, I everyone mean. talks so much about this topic, but I'm not convinced myself, and and because I've never seen any scripture written to that effect. 
it's written somewhere. It's just a small paragraph. And um, I think some of the sannyasis know it by heart, but uh, I never had to explain to anyone. So I never bothered uh, doing it by heart. But I will find yes, out sure. and share it. Yes, definitely. I would be very, very grateful. Thank you so much. Thanks. And thank you for your lecture today. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think yeah, it like, was uh, that was, uh, was, uh, was during the Samundra Manthan, uh, the devtas and the uh, danavs were there, and then two um, uh, danavs, Rahu and Ketu, uh, had the um, uh, nectar, and yeah. their uh, neck was slaughtered, and where the blood dropped became onion and garlic, and that's why it's supposed to be uh, a food that causes a lot of passion yes. because it came from the uh, danavs. Uh, yeah. But obviously, Mataji, I am not uh, a great scholar on this, so um, I wouldn't uh, know exactly. But that, this is what I'm. Uh, yes, uh, and both of them are in a mode of uh, ignorance. Yes. Garlic and onion both uh, they increase your mode of ignorance. So we um, don't take. But, it. but in this COVID time, people are advising to eat garlic and onion. So. Um, uh, it increases the heat and therefore uh, resistance towards the virus. But um, well, no, none of the devotees I know they would touch. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, Mataji, three three more questions. That's why I'm hurrying up okay. because I respect your time. So the next question from Prahlad, then Soni Mataji, and then oh, no, Prahlad, Ravi Prabhuji, and Soni Mataji. Prahlad, ask your question first. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's me, Sadhana. Hare oh, Krishna. Hare Bol, Hare Bol, Hare Krishna. Hare okay, now, yes. I wanted to just add on something. You know, when I first got married, what happened is uh, my husband used to take onion garlic. Yes. Yeah, before even we got initiated, he used to take onion garlic and tea. And uh, it is me, I never used to like garlic especially the smell yes what we used to do we used to offer food and we had photos of shiva ganesh all that but uh, what used to happen is he we would i would cook food we would offer it and mm -hmm. then when i'm serving him is when i would put back the food and uh, he would tell me now add for me the onions and garlic and give me oh, oh, no. yeah. then, Offered food, yes. and he would yeah. offer offered food, but he would add all his impunity there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Still, he stopped, and then we got initiated. But in the beginning, it was like each and every person was trying to tolerate each other's way of eating, way habits of eating. Yeah. So you're other... building up a um, you're building up that rasa that. Uh, yeah. The taste of, I mean, you know, people have taste for chanting. You, you are building up the taste for cha uh, eating. No, I, stuff I, without what, garlic and onion. So what it happened, took slowly. And the had no and the garlic, I had never taken tea in my life. Uh -huh. I used to like to go all at all from a young age. Oh, I see. Up to I think five, I yes. took tea, and then after that, it's like I started rejecting. I was feeling like bad when I eat with bread. I would feel very bad. So mom would give me milk. If there is no milk, I would take warm water. Ah. Yeah. So my parents used to do that. So it's something that was in me even from the beginning. I never used to take at all. <coughs> uh, I remember onion. Mom used to fry food with onion. Yes. But garlic, no, because I used to feel a lot of irritation with the smell. Oh, so what I, do is I decided to just tolerate, but we would offer the food first. I eat it the way it is. And for years, he would cut those things and put on the food. Yeah. Slowly by slowly until maybe I think he realized, oh, she has left everything and I'm still with this. So let me also leave. So he left also. Yeah, he, you built up the um, rasa for uh, stuff yes. without garlic and onion. And yes. he also had the association of you, association yeah. of a devotee. And he must have been chanting Hare Krishna as well. Yeah, so, so he thought... came together. I'm not 
I started following. In fact, even sometimes when I used to come in his corn and he would wait at the bench and then he would even criticize the DTs. He would say, this D my our DTs are better because we came from so many Ryan Bucks. So we'd say, our DTs are even better. I don't understand why you have to come here. But then by slowly he came in. And I understood. Yeah, so sometimes it can happen like this, but the, the, we have to use some wisdom and uh, yes. try to accommodate someone in that way. But then slowly by slowly, <laughs> She's enjoying this food and I'm um, still with this. Let me just drop it and we continue the way she is doing the food because she's enjoying a sanctified food, pure, pu purified food, food offered to the Lord just as it is. You know, remnants of the Lord just as it is. And it starts purifying. It starts yeah. acting. The prashadam starts acting. You can yes. see the prashadam will act. Sooner or later, the prashadam will act. Yes, then I remember my first beads when I was given by Iman Siganga. When I went okay. home, it was like, it was, he, he told me, go back and give her, give her some money. Uh, you cannot take anything for free. And while I was chanting my, my Hare Krishna with my mantras, he was chanting the Swami Narayan ones. And the Karun, he just uh, blended in. And slowly. She's not, okay, yeah. Sadna, yeah. let me yeah. butt in now. Let me yes. butt in. You've explained it now. By the way, yes. you have to know her husband is Indian and she's African. Does it make sense? Hari <laughs> Bol. Anyway, next. <laughs> and he's a Patel, by the way. And she's a Sophia, Sophie Vaswani. Anyway, mm -hmm. we can see if the spiritual life also comes from previous birth. Life, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I, I think her husband over. is more fortunate. He is fortunate yes. enough to get a wife. Yeah. Who bring what him when you got married, he did not expect that uh, I would follow mm -hmm. more of his side. He actually <laughs> expected us to just be, you no know, be, they call, he called it continental, like just there, you know. When it is time for prayers, we just go to Mandir and just come back. Ah. So it was like that. And he used to tell me, I can even go to church because we can even, because my, my dad was a priest. So he used to, oh. yeah, he says, I can even go to church with you. We can go to temple and we come back. So I thought, suppose uh, a family comes, maybe the kids come. The kids will be so confused because yes. every time, we, every time <laughs> we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate uh, Diwali. Uh, so the kids will be a bit confused. So I decided, no, no, no. Let me decide on one thing. One, yes, definitely. Me, I'm not forcing you, but you can, uh, you, you're doing it by yourself. I'm not forcing you to change. So I, I just changed like that. And I had willingly. some other. You did it willingly, which is very nice. Yeah, and even at, uh, uh, in my high school, I had done Hinduism uh -huh. because we had no Christian uh, religion teacher for uh -huh. quite some time. So everyone was told to go to social studies, but to uh -huh. choose social studies, lecture, IRE, and uh, uh, CRE. So I thought ah, social studies is something common, we know. So let me try something that I don't know. So I, I joined Hinduism. Huh? And I was jumpy. Sometimes IRE, sometimes Islamic, sometimes I'm in uh, HRE. But I never wanted to go to social studies. So huh? then I decided, no, I'm going to do HRE. So I did HRE. Well, HRE oh, is Hindu religion Please education. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Sadhna Mataji, for yeah. sharing. Uh, uh, Very know, nice realization. Uh, I mean, these these things help us because these are real people speaking to us. It's not yes. somebody we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. when you say such things, then it really helps Come us with our faith. It does. Uh, yeah. It becomes more stronger and determination becomes yeah. um, a little so more these powerful. People in the end, just join in. They just blend by themselves. Krishna is very merciful. He gives us that wisdom and they just blend. 
Okay, uh, so we have two more questions and I know it is 7.21 and I had promised 7.20. So quickly, Ravi Prabhuji, quickly ask your question because I want Mataji to, uh, she has- uh, Hare Krishna. Yes. I, I just want to add, uh, answer uh, Divyesh. Basically in Ayurveda, foods are three types, uh, tamasic, rajasthik and uh, sattvic, yes. sattvic. And you are not supposed to offer any tamasic food to Krishna. And mushrooms and onions are tamasic. And garlic. So just, yeah, mush and garlic, of course. Yeah. So he should just read that on the web. And, and so it is. Nothing tamasic for Krishna, period. So, you know, you don't need any scriptures for that. But anyway. You don't want him to I get think. angry with us. <laughs> we rather not give him the tamasic food. <laughs> exactly. Or or up, upset him by giving him alcohol ah, and that will affect his mind. Yeah, That's tamasic. Anyway. Okay. That's thank that. you. Thank you very much, Ravi Prabhuji. And Soni Mataji, you are the last person with the question. You ask the question and close the session. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, mine is just to add to what uh, Ravi Prabhuji has said. Now, in the Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 17, starting from text 7 and 8, 8, 9, uh, the Lord talks about the, the three, uh, like the, uh, the food that we offer, yeah? There are three kinds, there are three kinds, according to the material nature. And if you see nicely text 9 of chapter 17, it says, clearly that foods that are too bitter, too sour, salty, salty, hot, pungent, dry and burning are those to dear to those in the mode of passion. Such foods cause distress, misery and disease. And that's why we cannot eat onion and garlic. It is here, it's not specified, yes, but it is, uh, if you see onion and garlic, they're pungent, yeah? They're pungent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if we, if the Lord says that uh, this, this, this. Uh, when you eat such foods, you know they cause us distress, misery, and disease. So why, yeah, uh, Hari Bol? That's what I wanted to add and to contribute to Divesh Prabhuji's question. Yeah. No, that that is right, uh, Mataji. What you said is right. They are not in a mode of uh, sattva, not in yeah. a mode of goodness. So we can do without them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that still goes on. We don't have yeah. to. Yeah. Yes. Lie yes. On them. Yeah. Okay, Mataji, please okay. close the session. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Mataji, Hare. one minute. Let Soni Mataji thank you appropriately. Soni Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you very much uh, for this wonderful class. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, we really thank you for your time, for sharing this valuable knowledge. Uh, we are very forgetful people. And uh, you, with you, you know, keeping on uh, reminding us and you know, hopefully something will stick, you know, in our minds. So thank you so much. Uh, so uh, I would like everyone to unmute. Then we chant one Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada ji. Mataji Jai. Rajkishori Mataji ki Jai. Thank you very much.